I'm Ji from UCLA, and uh, I'm going to talk about data confidentiality and also access control uh, in NDN. Um, this confidentiality and, also, and access control, they, also, um, they often come together because that if you want to encrypt the data, you need to know uh, who to grant the key to decrypt the content. So uh, just think of today's uh, confidentiality and also access control. Um, First is the traditional connection-based uh, confidentiality. So, as Alicia um, mentioned earlier, so it's not it, it may be, it may not be the true end-to-end -end confidentiality because you may talk to like uh, the middle box or the um, CDN nodes. And also, when you uh, apply the connection-based confidentiality to multi-party um, content sharing, the it becomes a problem about the um, Scalability, and also um, there are also some uh, uh, confidentiality mechanisms over current architecture that directly encrypt the content. So it's not uh, connection based, but uh, you can see it's a like a content centric encryption mechanism. But uh, over TCP/IP, you know, it, it has inefficient key distribution because you need to know where to fetch those keys. And also, um, even though you want to share some uh, encrypted content with multiple uh, parties, they need to build like a TCP/IP uh, communication connection with you, and uh, you cannot enjoy the content multicast feature of NPN. So that's why we want to have uh, the data-centric confidentiality and access control mechanisms over NPN. So first, um, the first bullet is not about the confidentiality, but uh, about the authentication and the integrity. So it's given by NDN's building uh, security because producer will sign each data packets uh, before it delivery. So, and uh, we can see that integrity actually will help the confidentiality. Like, uh, just think of the main in the middle attack. Uh, you, if you just uh, publish some encrypted content without a signature, uh, a man in the middle can just do some change. Uh, and uh, for the consumer part, it cannot deliver, it find that something has been changed until you do the um, decrypt decryption. Uh, and the second bullet is about the, about the naming convention. So in NDN, we can use, we play with names to um, Automate the key distribution process in the access control and the confidentiality process. So, the main idea is that we can extract the. So, so um, the first thing is that we name keys, and uh, and therefore we can fetch the keys with interest packets. And um, so, in the access control uh, mechanism, we put the key name into the name or the content of the. Uh, content packets, so we can extract the key name from the data packets and uh, directly send out the interest package for this key and fetch it back without like querying the DNS server and then learn which IP address should go. And um, and just think of it, DNS itself may not be secured. Um, yeah, that's about the second bullet. So the last one is about the content delivery and the in-network cache. So. Um, the, the confidentiality, you encrypt the content uh, over TCP IP packet, uh, but uh, for the consumers to fetch those content, they still need to build like um, that number of connections to you and fetch those content. And uh, in the end, you can have your encrypted content uh, cached in the routers or the like uh, repo data repositories for uh, content delivery. So let's let's talk about the name based name based access control. Uh, NAC in short. So the concept is kind of uh, very simple. It only have three parties here. So first is the access manager. So it defines uh, who should have the privilege or the access rights to decrypt to visit your data. And uh, this encryptor here. Is the one who uh, produce data and do the encryption. 
and the decryptor is the consumers in the system who will uh, fetch the encrypted content and then use the key um, granted by the access manager to decrypt the contents and um, and read. So at the triangle here, the, the access manager um, defines the encryption policy and then notice the encryptor, so the encryptor know how, which key to use to encrypt the data. And uh, for the decryptor, access manager actually grants access, like uh, uh, they give the uh, decryption keys to the decryptor so they can decrypt the data. Um, here is an example. So like uh, in a scenario, you have an Android phone that the uh, access controller, and they want to control that only the television can, can visit the data produced by your camera. And um, so basically, the camera will encrypt the content produced by the camera. And uh, so television wants to get the key to decrypt this content, and uh, all the things is controlled by the access controller. So, so this part should, should go higher. So, so this is a controller. It has the um, decryption key and the encryption key. So it basically delivered the uh, decryption key using um, decryptor's uh, public key to, to encrypt the decryption key and uh, deliver this decryption key to the decryptor. Okay, so it's a little complex. Um, and uh, it delivered the encryption key to the encryptor. And uh, for the encryptor, just uh, like what we do nowadays, we don't usually use the asymmetric uh, encryption mechanism to encrypt content. We have a like a symmetric content key in the middle to improve the efficiency. So here's I show how basically the NAC work. So for the television, we have the public key and the private key. That's that's its identity and identity key. So just like the certificate, the television have. And for the uh, access controller, it has the, the the key pair to control the access. And uh, first, the Android phone, the controller use decryptor's public key to encrypt the decryption key for this uh, data consumer. And uh, the access manager can publish uh, to the pub publish this encrypted uh, decryption key, like to the Ripple or to some other persistent storage. And next, um, we have the camera. The camera create a symmetric key. We call the C key constant key here. And this key is used to um, like to do AES encryption to the content. And uh, yeah, we use this C key to encrypt the data here. Symmetric encryption, and uh, right here. So we, the the data producer, fetch the encryption key from the access manager, um, either from directly from this access manager in real time or fetch from uh, like a data ripple. So it fetch the key and they encrypt the constant key here. And right, encrypt the constant key, and uh, so the Data producer is ready now, so it has the encrypted data packet and the encrypted constant key. So for the decrypt for the decryptor, the television here to decrypt the data, it first fetch the encrypted data, and to decrypt this data, it needs the constant key. So it fetch the constant key, but it's also encrypted. So you want to decrypt this constant key, you then fetch the decryption key. Okay. This key is still uh, encrypted, but uh, you have the key to decrypt it. That's your own uh, private key. And uh, you get the, the, this decryption key, and you use this key to decrypt the constant key, and then use the constant key to decrypt the data. Which question is the encryption key uh, for the producer encrypted by a public key of the producer? Oh, no, it's encrypted. Because it's public key, right? Um, you don't need to. Encryption. Okay, so here I'm gonna show how the naming convention works here. Um, so let's think of the story like this. So we assume that the access manager it has the name of slash home slash controller. 
and uh, the authorized consumer it has a uh, like slash home slash living room slash television uh, one, and uh, the data set that is being controlled, being encrypted, is the this uh, home living room camera one front wheel, and the producer of course is the home living room and camera slash camera one. Okay, so um, first as we the animation in the previous slides. So the Android phone, the access manager prepares two packets. One is the encryption key, one the decryption key. So the encryption key, uh, so check the name here. The, the name in blue is the is, uh, access manager's prefix. And uh, after that, we have a, like a special uh, component called NAC. And after the NAC, the name in red is actually the the data set that is being controlled. So with this name, actually the uh, access manager will notify the producer, okay, uh, when you produce data under this red name, please use this key in the content to, to, the, to do the encryption. And uh, in the content is, is the encryption key and it has a key ID in the, in the last component of the name. And uh, for the decryption key, so it's uh, encrypted by the um, decryptor's identity public key. So here, as the name shows, uh, first blue part is still the prefix of the manager, and this right uh, part is the data set that is being controlled. And uh, we have a, like, a special uh, component here called, uh, called encrypted by. So with this encrypted by, it actually indicates uh, this key is for this red guy, the uh, green guy, sorry. So the green guy is actually the, the decryptor. So the dec decryptor can learn from its name to know which key I should use, which my identity, identity public key I should use to decrypt this um, decryption key. And uh, here is for the encryptor. So basically three steps first. Uh, it's fetch back the key encryption key, and it's in plain text, so no need to decrypt, decrypt the content. And uh, then it uh, uh, generate the symmetric key called the C key, and uh, publish this C key uh, using the key key to encrypt this C key. And um, right, and uh, encrypt the input data using C key and um, publish the encrypted content. Right. Yeah, that's for the encryptor. So for the decryptor, it first fetch the encrypted content, um, and uh, from the content, uh, from the content data, it can learn the name of the C key, uh, and uh, use this C key name to generate the interest and fetch the C key data packet. And from the CK data packet name, it learns, it learns which uh, which uh, key encryption uh, key decryption key should be used, and uh, it then use this key, uh, name to fetch the key decryption key. Okay. Okay. So fetch the key decryption key and use its own identity key to decrypt this key CK. And finally, finish the, all the decryption process and get the content. So, uh, one thing that is very interesting to learn is that how can we play with name to achieve fine granularity in the access control? So, um, and the secret is in the data set name. So, the data set that is being controlled, being encrypted, it could be anything that you can think. For example, here. You can have the granularity like uh, the living room's camera and the bedroom's camera. So for the living room, living room camera, they have a one granularity using one type of uh, key encryption, key, key decryption, key pair. And then for the bedroom, you use another pair of keys. And uh, if we step further, we can have a, like a granularity like uh, this one. So in the it's all in the living room. We can have like uh, camera wise front wheel and the camera's, camera one's back wheel. So for the front wheel, it uses one pair of key key and key key. 
for the back wheel use another pair. And uh, you can even go further. So like um, you have you have a like time timestamp in the in the name. So for the data that that is produced from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., use one pair of um, KEK and KTK. And for the for the data packet you uh, produce later, use another one. So you can control the the granularity in your system in a very, very simple way. And uh, here is some like um, APIs uh, provided in the NAC library. And um, hopefully it's very simple. Like uh, for the access manager, you can add member in your system. That, you, that means you can add the authorized decryptors in your system. And for the encryptor, basically you call this function encrypt. And uh, this function will automatically fetch the, the keys for you and do the encryption. And for the decryptor, you call the decrypt function. And uh, if any key is missing, it, it extracts the key name from the existing data packets and fetch those keys automatically. Um, yeah. So basically, the library does everything for you. And you just need to call the most high level functions. And uh, yeah. We do have some issues in, in the previous design, that is the scalability problem. So the complexity complexity of key generation is actually the big O location of M. So this M here is the number of granularities. That, is, that means uh, how many like different uh, data sites you have in your system that should be encrypted. And uh, just think of the example we have here. You can have. Um, so many different granularities, and even so, when you add a new component uh, in this name, you actually you may got a, another many uh, new granularities in the system. So it has some problem of the scalability, and uh, think of the complexity of key, dis key distribution. You need to give this uh, big OM uh, key uh, key case to. To, like, uh, to the number of consumers. So here you need to have a big old notation of m times n um, copies of the encrypted PDK to consumers. Yeah, and, uh, and I said before, so when you have very, uh, when you have many uh, granularities in the system, it becomes a di disaster because you have so many PDK and PDK pairs to have. So can we solve that problem? And uh, actually, we found a solution called uh, attribute-based encryption. So the idea of this attribute-based encryption, or ABE in short, is uh, kind of very, it's very simple. So that means, uh, like the example here, so I can encrypt the data using this policy called the uh, living room. This is an attribute. And display device, this is another attribute. And uh, prosecute them, or display authorized. So Basically, I have three attributes here. I use this policy to encrypt the data. And to decrypt the data, you need to satisfy this policy. So two possibility, so two possible um, attribute size could be if you have a display authorized uh, attribute only, you, you can, you're fine, right? But there's an or there. You can decrypt the data directly. And they, and uh, another choice is that you have the living room and display um, device, these two attributes together to decrypt the content. So let's see how we can apply attribute-based encryption into the NAC. And actually this one type, one specific type of AB, there's another um, type of AB, but we're not gonna talk about it here. So this is how NAC AB work. So basically, uh, the data owner, the access manager, it has uh, sets, it's had a set of attributes here. Like here, there are three attributes, living room, display device, and display authorized. And uh, for, the, for the data that produced by this camera, the access manager decides to use this policy here to do the encryption. So first, just similar as the previous NAC, uh, the X, the X manager use uh, decryptors publicly to do the encryption to encrypt the, the
the attributes. So you get the encrypted attributes here. And then uh, the camera, just like uh, previous night, it creates the symmetric key, a C key here, and then do the encryption, encrypt the data. So this part is actually the same as the previous night. So the difference here, you use the policy. This is really a screen, not uh, some key piece. So you use this screen to do the encryption. So you encrypt the C key data. And uh, for the decryptor to decrypt the content, it first fetch the data, the same. Fetch the, uh, fetch the C key, just the same. And the difference here, you use your private key to decrypt the attributes and use the attributes to decrypt the content and the data. So why we see, oh, okay. So here is a concrete example. Um, the naming convention is just like before, but uh, without having a key ID, we have the like the policy here to replace the, the number of uh, yeah, the ID of key. And, uh, here is basically the same. Yeah. Um, and for the producer, they fetch the KEK to learn the policy and use this policy to encrypt the CK and use the CK to encrypt the content and publish them. Okay, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, as I've been following you here, I think that there's um, more role in the computation part as a uh, decryption and decryption. Uh, 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 are all of there be any uh, impact on the computation? Do you mean using like, AB or for the whole computation, for the decryption, decryption? Because I know we put in a key and key, or first we put in yeah, a key and key, then we put in well, the encryption and then the key that decrypts the decryption key mm -hmm. for each content, right? Uh, for content, you use C key, so it's a symmetric key like the AES. So it's one content key can be used for a large group of factors. Yeah. I mean, to, to the small one, this is the trade-off of factors. The less reuse of C key, the more control you can have with the reporting of that specific access. And like from 8 to 10, you may have multiple data packets, but you can use one C key. Yeah, for the decryptor, you basically fetch the uh, uh, attributes and use the attributes to see whether it, it can satisfy the policy and decrypt the content. You get the content. Okay, so why we see it has better scalability here? So, yeah, just think of the attributes. How, how, how can we combine different attributes together to make a policy? So, one policy is actually a one encryption key. So, for example, with uh, attributes. A, B, C, I can have like A and B, A or B, A, B, C, A and B, plus B, four C. So with like a small number of attributes, you can actually create a lot of um, policies. So you, you can create a lot of um, encryption keys. So here I see that uh, the number of attributes is actually much smaller than the number of granularities in the system. Uh, yeah, and uh, think of the complexity of key generation is actually, you only need to generate uh, the number of attributes of keys in the system. So one attribute connects to, um, one attribute is, is actually a one key bits. Yeah, one set of key bits. And the complexity of key distribution is that you need to deliver this, uh, um, this big O A number of attributes to uh, and to the number of consumers, which is n. So the complexity of distribution is uh, big O A times n. And uh, one thing that we can improve is that uh, the attributes actually it reflects some inherent uh, nature of the identity. For example, here the television it has the attributes of uh, uh, living room and display device. 
So this television is in the living room and it is a display device. So you can see those attributes reflect some some real world attributes of the device. And uh, so and therefore when you deliver the attributes, this this process could be um, merged with the process of uh, NDN uh, certificate issuance. So in this case, the complexity of the NAC AB system could only be big O of M. Oh, sorry, big O of, of A, the number of attributes. And uh, uh, for the NAC AB, we have a library to support it. Um, yeah, so it also provides kind of simple APIs for uh, developers. So by access the um, controller, it can command the producer's policy. Basically, tell the producer uh, under this prefix which policy you should use. And uh, for the producer, it's just the produce function. And uh, it fetches the policy automatically for you and do the encryption automatically for you and publish the CK data, the content data. And uh, for the consumer, the consume function will automatically fetch the uh, encrypted CK and encrypted content and the, do the decryption. Yeah, so these are some uh, pointers to the, to the existing uh, repos on GitHub. Okay, so uh, this is very, uh, Simple uh, implementation of the producer in the NAC, not NAC AB. So yeah. it only have uh, about 100 total line, total lines. So uh, so here uh, we have us to represent the producer, and actually here we put the access manager and encryptor together. So from logic, the access manager, encryptor, and decryptor. Are three rows, are three parties. But in the practice, you can combine the X manager and encryptor uh, as one party. So here we, we put these two things into the producer. And um, like uh, we will run this uh, this producer. It first uh, have the access manager here. Oh. Access manager here to add the member into the, as the authorized the decryptor. And uh, yeah, uh, so when interest comes, you call the encryptors encrypt here to automatically fetch all those missing case and do, do the encryption. And then for the consumer, to basically fetch the, create the instance of decryptor and uh, call the consume function, and that's it. Here, so call the decrypt function, and it will automatically fetch all the missing keys to do the decryption. You want to show the code for CV? Or yeah, I can show. Sure. Yeah, so here, this is how I uh, express the policy. So basically, I have uh, three attributes here. Uh, it reads a little bit weird. It's not like an and an or, but actually this one of two is or, this uh, uh, two of two is and. So it's a, basically a tree structure to connect all the attributes together. And uh, we we apply this policy into the data owner, so the access manager, I just call it a different name here. So it called this function as I showed later uh, before. So basically you tell the, uh, producer here, tell the producer which data name should uh, use which policy to do the encryption. And uh, for the producer, yeah, so it, it extracts the policy at the plan text here. Uh, oh, sorry. So it's, it tracks the policy at the parameter here and uh, use this uh, policy to do the encryption to encrypt the plan text here. And how do you define AND and OR operations? Or you like assume everything is AND? No, it's here. This one of two is OR. This two of two is AND. So it's a uh, user like a uh, plain text expression to 
represent the tree structure. So if you read from if you if you read from right uh, left to right, it's actually uh, attribute one or attribute two and attribute three. Yeah, and the, and this language is defined by by whom? What is the library using? Yeah, the library. And uh, of course, you can have like um, more readable expression and do some uh, transport by your own. And also, it actually, AB also support like uh, A larger than B, A smaller than B, like uh, uh, your age is larger than 18, some attributes policy like this. And for the consumer decryptor, you just call this uh, consume function. And uh, using the uh, attributes you have, if you have sufficient attribute size, then you can. There are a time to decrypt the content.